Hey friends, Elizabeth here from Plant Based Bride, back again with another video. Today's video is our final day of Plantmas 2022. Thank you all so much for joining me for yet another Plantmas and for all of your support and comments. I love reading each and every one, even if I can't reply to all of them. Today's video is my January setup for 2023, my new bullet journal. If you missed my new bullet journal setup where I do my yearly spreads, check that one out. It's in my Plant Mist 2022 playlist. And be sure to enter the giveaway in that video today, December 25th, is the deadline to enter the giveaway. So go watch that video if you missed it. But today is all about my January setup. When I was trying to come up with a theme for January, I was really stuck. <laughs> Usually by this point in the year, I'm pretty creatively drained. I've done a bunch of other themes during the year and I just don't really have any fresh ideas, it feels like. So I opened up Pinterest. I was scrolling through my inspiration board, looking through a bunch of different things. Nothing was really catching my interest. Nothing really appealed to me until I saw an image I'd saved of a random pretty wooden door, just a photograph of a door. And something about that picture really jumped out at me and grabbed my attention. And I decided then and there that some version of an old wooden door was going to be my cover page. And the rest of the theme <laughs> came out of the ether after that. Starting with this cover page, with this door here, it kind of feels like opening a door into the new year, opening a door into 2023, closing the door on 2022. And I took inspiration from one of my past videos, my dark academia theme from February, 2020, I believe where I did a drawing of a street and then used watercolors to add a bunch of neutral shades. And I really liked how that painting turned out and have been wanting to do more paintings in that style, drawings in that style ever since. So I decided to try that this time around to start by inking all of my little drawings and then to go back in later and use watercolors to add the color. So this door is a wooden door with a semicircle window in the top surrounded by bricks on this irregular stone wall. I'm using a bunch of different sizes of Secura Microns. I'll link all the supplies I used in this video in the description box as always to get different effects. So for some things like the wood grain texture on the door, I wanted to use a really fine nib like 003 or 005. Whereas for the grout in between the sort of uneven mason work on the wall, I wanted to use a really thick line. So I used the thickest nib that I have on hand, which is the 10 nib. This particular door had this semicircle window at the top and it had this really beautiful lattice work, what looked like wrought iron. And I really wanted to recreate it, but it was quite time consuming <laughs> to get right. I do think it looks really cool, but I'm very glad I had my circle template on hand. Let me just say that. Once I was happy with the basic inking of my cover page, I moved over to the next page, which is going to be my calendar spread, creating a very simple calendar as I always do and using my stamps to add the days of the week along the top and then also my January header. Because I had kind of a larger gap in this corner here, I wanted to do another little drawing and I thought it would be cool to mirror the shape of the door by drawing a window. 
in that same rectangle with a rounded top shape. This was based on a couple different photographs that I sort of spliced together in my imagination. And the perspective on this one was a bit of a challenge. I'm trying to use my ruler sparingly in these designs because I feel like I prefer the look of the hand-drawn lines, even if they're not quite straight. I feel like it fits this style of art a little better, or maybe it's just my preference, but there are definitely some lines that I just feel would be distracting if they weren't perfectly straight, like the panels in the wooden door or the lattice work in the window. So I did use my ruler for those. over to start working on my weekly spreads and I am trying out a slight variation of the new style of weekly I tested out for the first time in December or am currently testing out. There are some things I really like about this new layout for my weeklies and there were a couple things that didn't feel quite right so I'm trying something a little different. As I explained in my December plan with me, if you missed that one, go check it out. That one had a really adorable black capped chickadee theme. The concept for this is to create monthly task lists in a bunch of different categories that I can refer to and use throughout the month so I don't have to constantly rewrite tasks. A similar driving force to why I use the Rolling Weekly for so long, but just the way my brain works, I really like to subdivide tasks into different categories. I like to have my YouTube tasks separate from my Instagram tasks, separate from personal tasks. I really don't like them all being jumbled together. So this is kind of a method for me to be able to do that and to reduce the amount of times I have to rewrite tasks even more than they are already reduced by doing a rolling weekly. The basic layout in terms of the dimensions is the same here, where I'm splitting each page into thirds so that my actual weeklies where I write my day-to-day -day tasks take up the center two thirds of each page, leaving the outer third on either edge as a window to these monthly task lists. And because you can always see a task list on both the left and the right, no matter which weekly you're on, I wanted to make sure that the task list on both sides acted as priority task lists. So this is a change from what I did in December. In December on the left, I had my YouTube tasks and on the right, I had my plant mess schedule. In this version, I'm using the left-hand column as my plant-based bride priority tasks so that I make sure I get to the most important tasks. I can see them no matter what week I'm on, so they're not gonna get missed. And then same thing on the right, but for personal tasks. Then the rest of the columns are just other areas of either my work life or my personal life. So for work, I split it into YouTube, Patreon, Instagram and TikTok, and Plant-Based Bride General. My weeklies I set up in exactly the same way. I really liked this layout in December. It gives me just enough space to write out you know, five to 10 tasks that I'm gonna get done each and every day. For personal tasks, I split it into personal priority, travel, home, health, and hobbies. Flipping over to the final spread of this setup, which is going to be a quote and two more little pieces of art. So starting on the left side where the quote is gonna be, I wanted to draw a lamppost and then stamped out the quote for this month, which was focus on the step in front of you not the whole staircase. I loved that this felt very appropriate for the new year, a quote that really reminds us that even humongous goals are achieved just one step at a time. And as someone who is very easily overwhelmed and who has been very overwhelmed <laughs> recently, this is the kind of quote that I need in my life moving into 2023. And it also was great because I had already planned to do a drawing that was mostly focused on a set of stairs on the right. So I couldn't get over how perfectly it fit within this theme of random drawings of things that you could see outside. <laughs> I guess that's the theme. If you can come up with a better name for what this theme is, leave it in the comments down below.
his final drawing, a set of stairs heading up to a couple different little houses. There's a little lamp off the side of one of them. There's a couple trees and some leaves, just a cute little neighborhood. And once I had all my inking done and I had made sure to wait long enough that I knew all the ink was fully dry, it was time to go back in and add color. So again, just like in my Dark Academia theme, I'm using a variety of shades of gray and brown to really create a very neutral, washed out, sort of grungy look, which I feel fits winter time very well, at least where I live. Everything is white and gray and brown and kind of dingy. <laughs> so that's what I think of at this time of year. I'm using quite a bit of water compared to my usual preference because I want a pretty sheer wash of color and I want to make sure that any areas where I may go over the lines I already drew, that the paint doesn't obscure the line. I want the lines to really show through without having to go back in and go over them again once the paint is dry. This is the reason that I chose watercolors over gouache because gouache is more opaque even when you water it down than watercolor. So I'm using little tubes of Winsor & Newton common watercolors and picking up just the tiniest bit of pigment and really mixing it with a lot of water to make sure the colors are nice and sheer. Almost everything is painted with some combination of a mix of two shades of brown and black, a lighter, more reddish brown, a darker, slightly less saturated brown, and then black so I can make gray and darker browns. I really wanted the wall to be a variety of shades of gray, some warmer toned grays and some cooler toned grays. And then I wanted the bricks around the door to be a nice orangey color, and then the door itself to be a nice dark, rich brown. I'm also working in layers, again, because I'm using a lot of water and not too much pigment. Sometimes I have to go in a couple times to darken the color to the point where I'm happy with it. With the window, I'm keeping things pretty simple, using those same colors, trying to loosely indicate a red brick wall, but mostly sticking to shades of gray and this washed out warm brown. Flipping to the final spread to add color to these drawings as well. The lamp post is very simple, almost entirely a warm gray, though I will be going in with yellow once the base is dry to give it a bit of a glow. And for the final painting, again, using those same colors, sticking with a warm gray for the stone on either side of the staircase. Painting the buildings in different shades of warm brown. And then the stairs in a really nice deep brown.
going back in with yellow to give a bit of a glow to both of these lamps. And then I decided to incorporate a little bit of another color, just a touch of green added to the brown to add up here to the foliage. I felt like the lamppost on the left was missing something, so I went in with my yellow to add a very soft glow around the lamppost and not just inside. And I feel like that finished it off. So that's it for this setup. I'll do a quick flip through of all the spreads. You can see them. Again, let me know in the comments if you have a better descriptor for what this theme is other than drawings slash paintings of things you could see if you were walking down the street. <laughs> Leave whatever emoji feels most relevant to this theme to you in the comments down below if you made it all the way to the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching it. Thank you for watching all the other Plantmas videos. If you missed any of them and you're looking for entertainment over the holiday season, feel free to go back and watch those videos. I put a lot of heart and a lot of sleepless nights into making these videos for all of you, so I really appreciate it. And with that, I'm gonna get going and I will see you very soon in my next video in 2023. Bye friends.